Hello everyone, uh, this recording is a follow-up of a previous video regarding the main differences between 2019 and 2022 for Habakkuk's interface. And I collected some feedbacks because I didn't detail uh, the changes for some of the entities, especially the ones stored in the load collectors, so whether it's a force, a pressure or um, boundary conditions. So let's have a look at this in, in this video. Let me start with Hypermesh 2019. Right now in my model, I have two load collectors, one with constraints, the other one with a force. So I can show you the location of each entity. And especially if we look at the constraints and right click references, you see that I have multiple um, boundary conditions. The way they are written here in this model is there is one boundary card Per, um, per node. So if I right click, card edit, this is what I see, star boundary with a different degrees of free node for the, for the node. Same, let's say that now I want to, to apply a pressure on this uh, same model, I will pick a face, and if face is one, I will take a magnitude of 2.5, create this pressure. Let me go back to model. Uh, I have this auto one, which I will rename as pressure. And if I want to see the different values, so here I define, a, I define the uniform pressure. If I go to references, I will have as many star deload cards than um, elements. So if I do card edit, Here you see uh, one deload, one element, one deload. So we collected several feedbacks from Habacus users because in Habacus we have different ways to write the same thing. And some of our users were complaining that we were not allowing the possibility to allow um, set based definition for the loads for the ESPC, etc. etc. So from 2022, we start introducing this set based definition. So let's have a look at how it looks like. So let me export this model. And let's jump then to 2022.3. Let me open it. So the complete pressure 2019.op2. And now if you go to model, you still have, oh, sorry, I forgot before exporting, I forgot to go to model load step, double click on my load step. Here I will select my all my load collector, including the contact and pressure. Um, and then I will export. Uh, I should have not have checked the boundary by the way, but let's go. And let me import it again. So here I have my three load collectors, and if I go to pressure constraints and its references, here you will see a main difference with 2019, which is you do not have anymore as many deloads than uh, elements selected. What you have here, what you see is there is a load that has been populated inside Hypermesh. Does that mean uh, that Hypermesh will export the model with this set? No, um, not if you have imported it with an element-based definition for the deload instead of a set-based definition, because in that case, we have this great option here, which says export load on elements. And this is hard-coded, you cannot switch it. Uh, you you imported it with an element-based definition, it will be written uh, with an element-based definition to uh, preserve your, um, your data structure. And I can do the same with the constraints, uh, right-click, references. Oh, sorry. Uh, I hit the wrong one, uh, right-click, references.
And here again, you see one boundary which is applied to a set with all these degrees of freedom. Which means if, if you need to update one degree of freedom, you do not have to select all the entities and change. You, you just have now to deal with one single entity. So this was for importing a, a legacy model. And by the way, if you do the same in the new interface of loading the model, and uh, reviewing the entities, you will get the same. So let's wait for the model to load in, okay. And here it is, if I go to the model, you will see the three lot collectors uh, to our history, one our initial conditions. So let's go to node collectors. And here for this one, uh, you can see the force. And you can right click in the same way. And do references. And you will ac access to the same information. So you see one load and you have access to this uh, auto set. There is one difference between the old and the new interface in 2022, which is you find your loads, so the star boundary, the star C load, and the star D load, you, you see them from the model browser, from the new interface. If I come back to the old interface and go to the model browser, the only thing that you see is the load collectors themselves. So if you want to get access to um, your uh, star D load, star load, either you're running the uh, references uh, uh, as I did earlier, or you can activate the view browser, solver browser for hypermesh. And yeah, somehow with the new interface, you're trying to mix what were in two separate places. Previously, we had the model browser, which was mostly the, connect the collectors, so generic hypermesh entities, and you have the solver if you want to see the cards. Uh, so here you had the constraints, you had the loads. Now everything with the new interface is visible from the same uh, model browser, um, and you really have to consider it as a table of content. Now regarding the creation, uh, of a, a pressure. So let's take ex again the example of a pressure and let's say that I wanted to create a new pressure. Um, what you are able to do is, or what you have to do is to select or to define an element set. So from the deload, you do not have to create the element set before. From the deload, you just can click on create. You can create a set one which is either a nil set or a surface element, and you can pick your element. So here I will use the Alt to se and select by face with the Alt section. So let me again show the white section here to see that. And the color is probably not the best one, but you see by Alt, I'm selecting all the elements of the face. And when creating from scratch, again, and dealing with a uniform pressure, or uniform load, you have the possibility either to select um, the export on sets, which means that when you export the model, you will export a set of elements or to export on elements as you did in the past. So let's have a look at both. Uh, let's say that I want a magnitude of 2.5. Close. And uh, let me go to my load step. And let me introduce this new load collector, uh, which is auto one, apply. So first I will export on elements. So let me 
export the model, so verdec, what is the magnitude? I, I think it just to make it clear, uh, magnitude, let me change the magnitude here, not to have the same that the previous one, 3.33 file, export silver deck. And let's export it in complete pressure 2022. Yes, I want to change it. And now let me open with a text editor. The 2022, that's INP. So that you see how it is written. Uh, if I do the export on uh, load on elements, and if instead I choose the export load on sets. So let me do it step by step. So here you see one element, uh, one deload value. Now, if I change to export loads on sets and export the same model again, silver deck. Again, I, I will just overwrite this one. Yes. Export. And if I go back sorry, to my text editor, yes, I want to reload it. And here I have my first deload from 2019, the 2.5. And then I have my second deload, which is pointing to set one. And if I look for set one in my model, I have this EL set set one which contains all uh, my elements on which the entity is applied. So again, why we brought this change? It's because we got requests uh, for following set base definition for loads, for boundaries, etc. So now we are somehow exposing an, um, a set when you create or when you edit your entity. Again, if you need to edit a force if you need to edit a boundary condition no need to go to the sets directly just go to the load of interest and right click on your selection edit and you can do everything from your load so uh, this is a way you can uh, quickly create edit uh, your boundary condition your own uh, uniform forces uh, uniform pressure from uh, the new uh, from 2022 Thanks for reviewing this video. Have a nice day, everyone.